We've come a long way in the fight against HIV. Just 20 years ago was seen as a death sentence, but today we have a large number of treatment methods available, even to the point where some believe the war on HIV AIDS is almost over. But despite that, the fight still goes on. So how do we treat HIV? HIV is treated with a combination of medications. This is known as antiretroviral therapy, or ART. It's important to know that ART isn't a cure, but it is very effective in reducing the number of viral particles in the patient's blood. It is able to reduce the number to almost undetectable levels, and as a result, this means that the patient is much healthier and isn't as likely to transmit the infection. There are six classes of HIV treatment drugs, depending on their mechanism of action. These are fusion inhibitors, CCR5 antagonists, non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, integrase strand transfer inhibitors, and protease inhibitors. Depending on the patient, a regime will be selected, but typically two to three of these types of medications will be taken at the same time. This is to prevent the virus from becoming resistant to a single class of drug. As the name suggests, fusion inhibitors prevent the envelope of the HIV virus from fusing with the CD4 cells. It does this by binding to proteins on the envelope of the HIV virus, such as GP120. This stops it from being able to enter the cells. CCR5 antagonists work in a similar way by blocking the CCR5 receptors on the CD4 cells. So what happens if you're not on one of these drugs, or some of the HIV virus gets into the cell, then what? The next type of drug are NNRTIs. They work by blocking the reverse transcriptase enzyme. This stops the production of viral DNA being made in the immune cells. Reverse transcriptase uses viral RNA as a template to make viral single-strand DNA using nucleosides in the immune cells. This is where NRTIs come in. They are basically a dequin nucleoside. However, they are missing an important component, which means another nucleoside can't be attached to it, thereby breaking the chain and preventing the HIV DNA from being built. Integrase inhibitors stop the integrase enzyme from being able to bring the viral DNA into the nucleus. This is a particularly important step as studies have shown that integration of the viral DNA leads to apoptosis. The final class of drugs I'll speak about are protease inhibitors. If the HIV virus manages to integrate into the host DNA, then RNA polymerase will transcribe the viral DNA to create viral mRNA and viral RNA. The mRNA gets translated into a polyprotein. Protease is an enzyme that allows the creation of mature HIV virus by cleaving these polyproteins. Protease inhibitors can work by binding to the exocyte of the protease and stop it from working, thereby stopping it from reaching a mature stage. It is important to know when to start treatment. Ultimately, this will be down to the patient and the doctor, but there are a few factors that require treatment to be started immediately. Some of these are having a viral load greater than 100,000 per millimeter of blood, a CD4 T cell count that's less than 500 to 350 cells per cubic millimeter of blood, if the patient is pregnant, if the patient is a child, or if the patient has developed AIDS or any AIDS-defining illnesses, then it's time to start treatment. You may be wondering why you would wait and not start treatment immediately. While studies have shown that it is beneficial to start treatment as soon as you're aware of the infection, the drugs have some side effects such as anemia, diarrhea, neuropathy, headaches, depression, dizziness, decrease in bone density. These side effects could lead to a decrease in the patient's quality of life if taken too early. In addition, it's important that the patient understand they must take the medication every single day for the rest of their lives, as missing even one dose could lead to the HIV virus becoming drug resistant, meaning future treatment would be more difficult. Using these drugs, we can decrease the replication of HIV in the body by preventing entry into the cells, prevent creation of viral RNA, prevent integration and prevent maturing of the virus. So in the long run, the patient ends up with a much lower viral load in the blood. Thank you for watching today's video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe to get more videos. I hope you have a great day.